fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, I was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie And it reads Come now and let us reason together Said the Lord Though your sins be as scarlet They shall be white as snow Though they be red like crimson They shall be as wool Right and a lot of brothers garments are bloody right now Filthy bloody garments Right a lot of brothers have blood on their hands We need to start cleansing our hands right. Now not, not literally Right these are for the people watching who don't know What's really going on right we have to spiritually cleanse our hands, right? We have to start seeking the most high God and getting more nigh to our God, right? It's not gonna work, damn, just watching videos all day and just keeping the faith. We gotta do the works too, right? How y'all doing? Y'all believe in God? Anybody believe in God over here? In 2023, does anybody believe in God, right? You guys believe in Jesus Christ? Hey, come over here. Let's talk about it. Hey, see that? He's too tired to talk about Jesus Christ. Right? But I bet you they're not too tired to go do something wicked right now. Right? They're on their way to do God knows what. Right? It doesn't really matter. We're just trying to show the people that nobody really believes in God in 2023. This place is full of darkness. This place is full of evil. If you can't see, this place is full of uh, it's void of light. Read on from this. Reading on. Isaiah chapter uh, 1, the start of verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. But if you what? But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. Right, and a lot of men, they're going to get devoured with the sword. These are just warnings, simple warnings that we're trying to give our people, right? Whether you're watching, whether you're listening from down the block or across the street, these are the warnings that we had to send out, right? We had to blow the trumpet. We had to send out these warnings because if not, who's going to do it, right? We just walked down the block. We didn't see nobody evangelizing. You got Jehovah Witness out here. You got different Christians and different uh, denominations out here, and they just want to post up in front of a book, right? They just want to look good. These are the things that people do. Hey, how you doing, brother? You believe in God? Hey, one Bible scripture. One Bible scripture for the Lord. Right? If you're a black, Hispanic, or Native American, you got to repent and keep the commandments. Right. Right? So let's bring this out. Let me get first Maccabees. Here's the book of chapter 2. Here's the book of first Maccabees, chapter 2, and verse number 50. Bring it out. Hey, read. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law, and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time, so shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? Right. And Abraham was found faithful in temptation. How much more for us when we're tempted? Right? We got to follow after our forefathers. Be zealous for the law, like I said. Right? Be on fire for the law. Every morning you wake up, that's the first thing that should be on your mind. Right. If that's not on your mind, you got to start considering what, what you're really doing. Right? What are you giving your thoughts over onto? What are you meditating on? Right? How do you spend your time throughout the day? Right? Because if you're listening to worldly music, watching Netflix shows, you're not studying, you're not reading, Man. and you're bound to wake up and, and go off. Right? The second you go off. That's why we got to make sure that we do everything we got to do before we go to sleep, when we wake up, and continuing throughout the day, continually. There shouldn't be no on and off uh, lukewarmness. Right? Let me get Revelation chapter 3, start at verse 19. All right? Read off in this. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. Uh, fiends our father it's like fiends our father in being zealous and fervent obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood right and Phineas hey, he was zealous right so that's the type of that's the type of mentality and the spirit you gotta be moving in right the same spirit that these people go for for things in the world man people be going harder in the world than they do in this truth hey how you doing what's your nationality 
What's your nationality, brother? You got time for one Bible scripture? Sorry for One Bible scripture? Right. Alright, you don't gotta be sorry to us. Right. right you gotta say sorry to the most high. Alright, right, the most high is watching, beholding all the good and the evil. Right. right? So hey, people could people could do evil and sin by their lips by not proclaiming the truth. And we've seen it multiple times today. So bring this up. It's the book of James. Look, Revelation three. Uh yeah, go to Revelation three. This is Revelation chapter 3 and 18. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Read that again. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Right, going right back to it. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. These are the precepts we got to meditate on, right? Whenever you're feeling slothful, whenever you feel like you, you're just not doing enough, hey, you got to read these precepts. You got to go through the precepts and start literally reciting them in your mind throughout the day. All right, I gotta be zealous, right? I gotta be on fire, right? The fire shall, you know, the fire is always gonna be burning upon the altar. These are the things that you gotta be thinking about in your head throughout the day, right? I gotta repent, 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 right? These are the things you keep repeating and reciting them over and over in your mind. Because if you don't, and you might go off, you might forget, right? The Lord's telling us to remember these commandments. Hey, since you got time for one Bible scripture? Y'all got time for one Bible scripture? You believe in God, right? So nobody believes in God, right? You think so? Right? Yeah, you, you never know, right? That's why we gotta test the spirit. The spirit might bear witness, right? But a lot of times we check on people who we think they're Israel, but then as soon as we talk to them, we end up finding out that they're wicked, Man. right? We end up finding out, damn, they might be a heathen. Right, they moving in the same spirit as our oppressors, right? So you got to prove, you got to try every spirit. Right. You can't just trust everybody. Right. You can't just welcome everybody into your house. Right, right. right? bring this up. Going to read on. Verse number twenty. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him. And will what? And, and will sup, sup with him. him. Right, and the Lord is knocking on our door every single day. So when you wake up, like I was saying, when you wake up, the first thing you should be thinking about are these precepts, right. are the laws, man. And the Lord is knocking on the door as soon as you wake up. Because who woke you up? Right. Who woke you up in the first place? Right. You wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do is, now open your phone. Right, I fell victim to this before. That's why we gotta we gotta talk about these things. We can't just keep these things in. We gotta actually talk about these things. You might wake up and do something as small as just look at your phone. The first thing you do when you wake up, it should be going and praying to the Lord, right? Thanking the Lord for the mercy and the grace that you have, right? For being able to wake up and serve him, right? Every obstacle that's took, that's brought upon your way, you should take it cheerfully as well, right? You might wake up and all hell breaks loose as soon as you wake up, right? You get a phone, you got like 10 missing calls from, from uh, your sister or something saying that her, her car broke down, she in the hospital, right? All hell broke loose with your mom, right? best friend just died i mean anything can happen when you wake up in the morning what are you gonna do about it right are you gonna roll over and lay down or are you are you gonna stand up right stand up for the most high read on from this verse 21 to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne even as i have also overcame and am set down with my father and his throne right and we're trying to suffer and go to the go through as much as we can and overcome it for our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? All the sufferings that our Lord went through, hey, we got to look at that as an example. Let me get Hebrews chapter 12 and start at verse number 1. Right? We got to look at that as an example. Right? All the sufferings, all the trials and tribulations, these are the things that we're going to go through every single day when we wake up approaching the last days. Right? right? These are the things that we got to think about, man. Alright, so bring this out. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 12. And verse number one. Bring it out. Wherefore, seeing we also are com compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And the what? The sin which doth so easily beset us. Right. And there's a lot of sin that easily besets you. As soon as you wake up in the morning, right? Like I said, it might be that phone. For most of us, it is that phone, right? Because you... You seeing everything with your own eyes, right? It all starts with your eyes. You damn turn on your phone, right? And then you see damn drugs, women, 
right? All types of, of wickedness, fornication, right? You're looking at these things, right? And if you're looking at that, you're not looking at your Bible, right? You're not looking at nature and spiritual things, right? Hey, something very bad is going to happen. The Lord's going to give you all over to a reprobate mind, you know? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was that was set before him, who for the joy that was set before him, read, endured the cross. Did what? Endured, endured the cross. cross. That again? Endured, endured the cross. cross. Despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Right, and once again, set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Right. Right. So we have to we have to consider our Lord Yahweh Shai, all the sufferings that he went through and how it's gonna make us perfect. Right? How that's gonna refine us as gold and silver. Right? Let me get Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10. Right? And let me get Zechariah chapter 13 and verse number 9. No, no. And then let me get Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9. All right, whoever got it first. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 48, and verse number 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Right. And the Lord, if you're going through affliction, he chose you to go through that affliction. Right. He chose you to be able to suffer to make you perfect. Right? You should be grateful. Right? You should take that on cheerfully. Right? You should you should start getting to, getting your uh your toolbox together as a workman. And start studying, hitting the books, right? Start praying, start fasting, start putting in the work, start getting ready for that day, right? Because, hey, anything can happen any day now. While we out here, on the way home, in your sleep, right? Don't think that the Lord can't wake you up out of your sleep right. and something has some strange calamity happen to you, right. right? Or have a damn, these airstrikes coming down on America, right. right? Don't think that the Lord can't wake you up out of your sleep in the middle of the night, right? You might not be, hey, it's going to be when you least expect it. Read on from this. <clears throat> so like, bring this on Zechariah, actually. In Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. But the what? But the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will what? And, and I, will I will bring, bring the, the third part, part through the fire. Right. And literally and spiritually we got to go through this fire right some men they're going to be burned up eyes are going to be melting right tongues going to be melting in their mouth their flesh is going to be falling off of their bones right. it's going to be people literally burning up right and through the spirit hey there's going to be righteous men also burning right also going to the fire being tried and being refined like that silver and that gold right that's how you got to imagine yourself right all the pain and the affliction you're going through that's just purging out and blotting out all the wickedness and the sin that you was in, right? right? You got to endure that affliction. Right. Hey, hey, we deserve it. We didn't, we didn't do nothing in the world to deserve this truth. Right. We were wicked in the world, right. right? We were off in the world, so we didn't do nothing to really deserve this truth. Yet, brothers are, are powerful, right? Y'all believe in God? You believe in God? You got time for one Bible scripture? One verse. Be a leader. Be a leader, not a follower. Right. If you believe in God, be a leader, not a follower. Right. Right. You got to stand up for the Lord. Right. Who's going to stand up for God? Right. Y'all believe in God? Y'all believe in God? Right. Hey. What about you guys? You guys believe in God? Probably not, right? What about you guys? Hey, so so nobody believes in the Lord, man. Right. Nobody believes in the Lord. It's it's made manifest. People are gonna love darkness more than they know they love the light. It is what it is, right? Read on from this. Uh, verse nine. Verse nine, and I will bring the third part through the fire. Hey, brother, nice jacket, man. Hey, you got time for one Bible scripture? Go. One Bible scripture. We got one Bible scripture. Right, let me get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 45. Right, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Right, you know what we're doing up here? Nah. We're teaching the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans their true nationality according to the Bible. Right. Not the modern day nationalities that we had that was given to us by our slave masters, but thousands of years ago, our God given nationality. 18 nations on the earth, we must 
come from one of these ancient nations. One of them, right? But let's see what nation we come from. We don't. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Bring it out. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, right? So it said these curses are going to come upon this one nation of people. In Deuteronomy 28, it's talking about the Israelites, right? The Israelites. That's one of the 18 nations in the Bible, you know? And shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Right, so there's going to be curses, meaning very bad things that are going to pursue this one nation of people. Right, read on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments. What? To, to keep, keep his commandments. commandments. Read that again. To, to keep, keep his commandments. commandments. Right, so whoever this nation is, God's chosen people, they will be punished to this very day for not keeping God's commandments. Mm. Right, so who are God's chosen people? All right, we're out here to tell you that it's a blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? If you see your nationality on this sign, these are modern day terms. These are ancient terms given by God, right? right? These are the modern day terms. Do you see your nationality on this side? Yeah. Which one? Blacks, American blacks. American blacks, right? Yeah. Now, what, no. if I were to ask you what your nationality was, what would you say? American blacks, American blacks right? Or black. Or black. Yeah. Why would you say a color? and not an actual nationality that consists of an actual heritage. Because there's no language called black unless you know nah. it. Nah. You know the language called black? No. Nah. Hello? Nah, I don't know. Right. So whoever you're talking to as well, if they're a black, Hispanic, or Native American, they may be an Israelite as well. These are your people. We have to cleave onto our people and we have to come back to our God. If not, we're going to continue to be in poverty. Right? Go to verse 16. One last scripture, brother. Verse 16, curse shall I be in the city, and curse shall I be in the field. Right, so these curses identify God's chosen people, okay? So whoever these curses are going to be on are who, who the chosen people are. You understand that, brother? We are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God's chosen people in the Bible. That's not something people just hear every day. You heard it today. You have to remember that. Do we have a flyer? Can somebody give this brother a flyer? When you go home, you have to open up this YouTube channel and start looking at your history. Right. You get Job chapter 8 and verse 8. Right? One last scripture, brother, before you leave. One last scripture. Right? You have to search out your forefathers, right? You just said that you were black, a color out of a crayon box. That's not a true nationality. Bring this out. This is the book of Job chapter 8, verse number 8. Bring it out. For inquire, I pray thee of the former eight. Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Right, it says inquire of the former age. I mean, you have to start asking who you, uh, who am I in the ancient world? Who are my forefathers, my foremothers? What is my history? Read on. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Right, prepare yourself to the search of your forefathers, brother. Go home and open up that YouTube channel, all right? All right, I'll post to the most high. Repair and keep the commandments, King. You yeah, you got to fly. All right, so, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Brothers might be on the phone. You got to kind of grab Jake up sometimes. Hey, we, we might have to grab up a Jake tonight. You never know, right? Or any, we'll do anything for the Lord, man, right. right? That's why we coming out here doing this right now, right? We're not afraid to come out here and proclaim the truth, right? Right. We have to come out here and proclaim the truth. If not, hey, we might have, I mean, what was the point of, of the Most High creating us? We're trying to be vessels onto honor, man. Right? right? The Most High has to use us to push us truth. Right? So where were we at? Zechariah uh, 13? Let me get Hebrews chapter 2. 2 and verse number 9. Start at verse 9. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9. And it reads... And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. Called on Yahweh and high priest after the order of the Malkin, Malkinese? <laughs> Malchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye all dull, dull and of hearing. So I can, seeing ye all dull of hearing. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Go ahead, bring it out from the top. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and verse number 9. Bring it out. But so we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. Right, and it says, for the suffering of death. Not only that, but this, this Bible scripture says that Jesus 
he was made a little lower than the angels, right? How was he? How is he the Most High God if he's a little bit lower than the angels, mm. right? Mm. So somebody has to explain that to us as well. Cough, cough. But there's some people nearby who probably wouldn't do that, right? And, and like we said, a lot of people they're not gonna proclaim the truth, right? Y'all believe in God? Y'all believe in God? Run. You're not gonna proclaim the truth Run. for God? No. Come on, be a, be a man and, and, and proclaim the truth for God. Right. Right? That's sad. That's sad right there. They could turn around and look at you with a straight face and not say nothing. Madness! With a straight face. Madness! That's crazy. <laughs> hey, let's bring this up. <laughs> this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse number 9. Bring it out. For we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by grace of God should taste death for every man. Right. And through the suffering, we're going to be made perfect. Right. We we have to go through these sufferings to be made perfect. That's what's going to make you perfect. The same way it made Yahweh Shai perfect, it's going to make us perfect as well. Right. He had to go through those sufferings. Right. He had to go through those sufferings. That's what made him perfect. Let me get uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I think it's 2 Peter chapter 2. And verse number 20. Start at verse 19. All right, let's bring this out over here. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 11. It's the book of Zechariah chapter 7 and 11. Look it out. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. And they what? And pulled away, away the, the shoulder. shoulder. And stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Right. And these people, they make their heart as an adamant stone. They harden their heart against the Most High God. You believe in God, man? With the Adidas jacket or, or a hoodie? Bro. Right, it is what it is. What about y'all? Y'all believe in God? Oh, what's he asking? You believe in God? Oh, not yeah, not today, right? Hey, you not. It doesn't matter if you believe in him today or tomorrow. The Lord's still gonna get up with you. Right. Right. It really doesn't matter. Right. So let's bring this up. First Peter. Yeah. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two and verse number twenty. Bring it out. For what glory is it if if ye be if ye be buffeted for your faults, he shall take it. Second, second Peter 2 and 20. This will be second Peter chapter 2 and verse number 20. For if be after, like it, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter edge. Go back to first Peter. Go back to first Peter. I think that's what you're First Peter chapter two and verse number twenty. For what glory is it that ye be buffeted for your faults, and ye should take it patient? But if, when ye shall do well, the suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with Yahweh. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Christ what? For also, lucky. For even unto, lucky. Because Christ also suffered Ooh. for us. Right, and Christ also suffered for us. Right? So that that's what we gotta look on to every single day, man. When you wake up in the morning, before you go to sleep, throughout the day. How y'all doing? Y'all got y'all got time for one Bible scripture? One Bible scripture. Right? So God is only the God of Israel. If you're a black, Hispanic, or Native American, you gotta repent and keep the commandments. Right? Anybody out of that group. And if you're not and get ready for captivity, right. right? It is what it is, right? At this point, we just got to tell them how it is, right? We're approaching the last days. How you doing, brother? You Latino? Latino, brother? Hey, you got time for one Bible scripture? Right? And we're not even going to ask these people. We already know what it is. Right. right? You can see it on their face. Right. Right. Read that again from the top, that last verse. Uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For here, for even here unto, ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us what? Leaving, leaving us, us an example. example you know? That ye should follow his steps. Where did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Right, and Christ did no sin. That's the perfect example, right? And, and he went through all the sufferings. How much better of an example could you get? I mean, you literally, 
I mean, we pretty much gave you the blueprint. Right. Oh, you got all the laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. You got the precept. Right. You got, we we have the liberty to damn buy uh buy a Bible freely whenever we have it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, if you got the money for it, yeah. right? You have all the grace and mercy right now to follow your Lord and be and be made perfect through the sufferings, right? right? And get yourself ready. Get yourself ready for everything that's to come because right. we already know what's coming, man. We know it's going to be all hell breaking loose. We know it's going to be tribulation. We had our forefathers and our foremothers. You had Esther. Damn, fasting. Fasting all the time just to get ready for war. Right? So let's get let's get that in Acts. Acts chapter 14. Right? Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. It's the book of Acts chapter 14 and 22. Bring it out. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we do much tribulation. Through what? And that we do much tribulation. Enter into the kingdom of God. Enter into what? Enter into, into the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Right. Through much tribulation, you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, right? So don't be surprised when things happen, man. Don't be surprised when you wake up and all, all hell breaks loose, right? You got to, hey, you got to gird, your, gird, your, uh, gird up your loins, right? You got to stay on fire. You got to keep your loins girded because anything can happen any single day, right? So let's bring this out. What, what I have you holding? Right. Let me get the book of Job, chapter 36. Let's start at verse number 11. Right. Job 36 and verse 11. Come on. Right. It's how many people do we ask walking up and down if they believe in God? If they believe in Jesus Christ. Right. How many people are going to proclaim the truth? Right. Most people, they're just going to turn it, uh, turn away their ears. Right, most people they're gonna turn away their shoulders. Let me get Ecclesiastes chapter seven and start at verse twenty-eight. All right, bring this up. This is the book of Job, chapter thirty-six and verse number eleven. Now, if they obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. Right. So if our people, we obey the Most High God, we serve our God, hey, we're gonna spend our days in prosperity. How? I mean, you get you get all this wisdom, right? You get all this inheritance, dwelling on thrones and scriptures, right? We get all of the, all of these promises, right? Y'all believe in God? Believe in the Bible? Jesus Christ? Nothing? It's crazy. Bring this up. And their years and pleasures, but they obey not. But if they what? But they, they obey not. not. They shall perish by the sword. They shall what? They, they shall, shall perish, perish by, by the sword. sword. Right. And if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. You know? And they shall die without knowledge. They shall what? And they, they shall die, die without, without knowledge. knowledge. Right. And there's a lot of people they're literally gonna die without knowledge. Right. Right. That's why we come out here, man. We come out here so our people don't die without knowledge, not knowing who their God is. Right. right. Not knowing that they're an Israelite, that they're God's chosen people. Right. How y'all doing? Y'all believe in God? Y'all believe in the Bible? You know what we out here doing, brother? Brother, you know what we out here doing? You don't got time for more Bible scripture. Right? We're not preaching, we're teaching it. Right? We're teaching up here. That's what the preachers do. They they go up and preach, they dance all day, but you're not learning nothing. Right? We're out here teaching, man. All right, bring us up. Ecclesiastes. Uh let me get Job chapter four, verse twenty one. Go ahead and bring on Ecclesiastes. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter seven. Said what verse what verse? Verse twenty eight. Yeah. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have one I One what? One man among a thousand have I found. But a woman among all those have I not found. Right. And one man out of a thousand. And also there was no women among the thousand as well. Right? So that's what we're out here. We're just trying to find that one man and possibly that one woman who do want to serve the Lord, who do want to repent, come back come back to their God, keep the commandments. Right, learn their true heritage and not just get caught up in all this religion, all this mythology. I mean, literally, every time we bring somebody in the truth, what are we doing? We're breaking down strongholds, right? Stronghold after stronghold, right? Doctrine after doctrine that they've been that, that they've been tossed to and fro with, right? Their entire lives. So bring this up. This is the boy Job at the board and verse of Bring it out. An old lion prepares it for lack of right. Uh, Job 4 21. This is the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 21. Freaking out. Does not their excellency, which is in them, go away? 
They die even without wisdom. They what? They, they die, die even without wisdom. Is that again? They, they die, die even without, without wisdom. wisdom. Right, and our people, they're dying without wisdom. So Lord willing, we don't come out here in vain. And all the work that we put in, man, and Lord willing, it's, it's affecting our people in a positive way. And that they don't die without wisdom, they don't die without knowledge, they learn who they truly are and come back to their heritage. That's all we out here trying to do. We're willing, to, we're willing to sacrifice our flesh and willing to die out here just to do that. Just to give the people the truth. Right? And that that's real sad that there's no wisdom out here and we had to come out here and do it. Right? This place is really sad. All right, let's get the last precept. Let me get Job chapter 28, and verse number 12. All right? We're going to pass it to the next party speaker. All right? Verse 2. This is the book of Job chapter 28, and verse number 12. Y'all got time for one Bible scripture? Y'all believe in God? With the brown sweater? All right, bring this out. This is the book of Job chapter 28. And verse number 12. Oh, where shall wisdom be found? But where, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Right? Where is wisdom going to be found and where is the place of understanding? This is a question, you know? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Neither is it what? Neither is it found in the land of the living. The deaf say, it is not in me. And the sea say, it is not in me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Right. And nothing could be compared unto the words of the Lord, man, in the last days. That's why we come out here to give our people these living waters, man. So our praise to the Most High Yahweh. Right. Our praise to the Most High Yahweh. Right. Because that's why we come out here just to do this. We, Like I said, we we making our bodies a living sacrifice. Right. We're literally willing to die out here for our people just to give them these words. Right. Right. If people think this is a game, but this ain't, this ain't a game, man. We're willing to fight for the Lord unto death, right? We're willing to come out here and risk our lives. That's the suffering isn't just emotional, right? It could be physical as well, right? This is not a game, right? So a lot of people think it's just emotional. Are right? you going to Christian church? It's just a lot of crying and weeping, and not a lot of problem solving, right? Not a lot of actions being taken, right? So we're out here to give. A, Give out the blueprint. Go ahead, bring out your precept. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse number 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto the pastors. Read that again. Woe be unto the pastors. One more time. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. And you got time for one Bible scripture, brother? Check out, And with the Nike shirt. Give us 30 seconds. One Bible scripture. All right? And at least they didn't take, you know, that, that waste of paper over there, right? The damn, the damn pamphlet with the website. We know what that website's all about. Seizure Boys there, right? White Jesus, right? All types of, uh, one Bible verse. Come on, come on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now we got a quick question for you real quick, right? First of all, do you believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible? All right, so... Right? Would, would you say that you're uh, what, what? What would be your denomination? Like a Christian, a Catholic, Christian? All right. So, what does it mean to be a Christian? Right. To to be a follower of Christ. All right. That would be the more accurate definition for it. So, to be a follower of Christ. Now, what did Christ tell us to do? Let me get Matthew chapter 19 and verse number 16. No. Right. This is what Christ told us to do. Right. So if we're if we are Christians, which all of us up here technically are. Right. We all want to follow Christ. But are you actually going to follow Christ? You can't just want it. You got to do it. Right? right. Let's bring this up. This is the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Bring it out. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what one good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right. But slow down when you read too, all right? So somebody came up to Jesus. They said, what do I got to do to get salvation, right? The kingdom of heaven. If I asked you, what would you tell me? Yeah, if, if I asked you, somebody came up to you on the street and they asked you, what do I got to do to get the kingdom of heaven? What do I got to do to get eternal life for salvation? That's not a normal question. What would you say? To what? Accept him. Accept him? How?
Right. Because I where words only mean so much because i can say i accept you right but every time you come around i reject you with my actions i kind of push you away i ignore you i don't talk to you right that's an instance that we knew each other right uh, that's just an example but we have to do more than just accept it. let's see what jesus said read on verse 17 and he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one there is none good but one read on that is god but if thou wilt enter into life, right? If you want salvation, if you want the kingdom of heaven, read on. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep, Keep the, the commandments. Read that again. Keep, Keep the, the commandments. commandments. What's the kingdom of heaven? Keep the Already commandments. Right. So if you want the kingdom of heaven, you want eternal life. Jesus said to keep the commandments, right? So it's keeping the commandments. It That's an action. That means that we have to do specific actions, which are the commandments, right? So do you know the commandments of God? You know a couple? Yeah. What are you talking about? Like the, the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Okay, which, which one of the Ten Commandments do you know? Don't murder, don't steal. That's don't right. That's right. Man, it's been a minute. Don't lie, right? Yeah, yeah, don't lie. Right. It's another commandment. I forgot a couple Right? Did you know that there's commandments outside of the Ten Commandments? A lot of people don't know that. Now, you might know that. But do you believe that we still have to keep those commandments? Because a lot of people, that's a lot, that's a big argument that people have. That we still got to keep all the commandments? Or do I just get to pick and choose which one I want to keep based, you know, just so I can do my own will? What do you think? According to the Bible, do we still have to keep the commandments outside of the Ten Commandments? If the Bible says so. Let me get Matthew chapter 23 and verse 1. Right? Matthew chapter 23 verse 1. Let me get Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Right? Let's bring this out. We got to prove our things, right? If somebody says something to you, they're making claims, they have to support it with evidence. Because then that would make them a liar if they didn't, right? Let's bring this out. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 23, and verse number 1. Read out. Then, G then, spake Je Sorry, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Right, so Jesus saying, Hey, the scribes and the Pharisees, which are different Jewish sects, they sit in Moses' seat. Meaning they're teaching the law because Moses gave the law, right? So these scribes and these Pharisees, they were hypocrites. They were teaching the law, but they weren't doing the law, right? So they're teaching everybody, don't eat pork. Don't eat shrimp, crab, or lobster, right? Put on your fringes, right? Keep the feast days. Keep the high holy days. Keep the commandments. But they weren't actually doing them. They were hypocrites. Read on. All, all therefore whatsoever they bid you. All therefore whatsoever they bid you. So Jesus say, whatever they tell you to do, read on. Observe. That observe and do. Observe and what? That observe and do. Right? He said, whatever these scribes and these Pharisees teach you, observe it and make sure that you do it. Right? All the commandments that they were teaching people, Jesus said, hey, make sure that you do those commandments. Read on. But do not ye after their works. But do not what? But do not ye after their works. Right? But don't do after their works. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't go out telling people, right, not to do this, not to do that. But then you catch them walk across the street an hour later doing the same thing they told you not to do right. right or they tell you to put on your fridges which is which is a law of dealing with clothing right which is a lot deeper than just a so what people think is a fashion statement right if they don't they might keep that commandment but then they go home they take it off they just can't wait to rip off their fringes right they can't wait to to sin and go up all right so the next question is what is sin according to the bible Right? These are basic things that we got to know, right? How to get salvation, right? But also, what is sin? Do you know? Anything that goes against the word of God. Anything that goes against the word of God. Can you be more specific with that? He's the Ten Commandments, like what you're saying. Okay. What about the ones outside of the Ten? That as well. That's right. right. So you agree we have to keep all the commandments? Yeah. Outside of the Ten as well, yeah. right? In order to get salvation. According to Jesus Christ, right? All right, Khan, all praises. Right? Now, like I was saying, what is sin according to the Bible? Let's get 1 John 3 and 4. Right? Go ahead and bring this out. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3, and verse number 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgressed of the, also the law. Whosoever commits sin transgressed, meaning they break the law. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. For what? For, For sin, sin is, is the transgression, transgression of, of the law. law. Right? Sin is when you break God's laws. Right. 
So in order to know if you're sinning, you have to know what? You got to know the law. You got to know the law. Because if you don't know the law, then you're not going to know if you're sinning or not. That would just be backwards. Now, I'm sure you don't want to die right here in America, right? And all the judgment that's coming upon the earth right now, I know you see what's going on in the news. Everybody talks about it on social media. Literally can't get away from it. What do you think that the that the Lord's going to do to the people who are not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and not serving it, right? They're going to get the same judgment that those people uh, overseas is getting. They're getting bombed. They got airstrikes on them, right? Hey, they, it's, not, it's not a coincidence that that stuff is happening. Right. right it's just a perfect series of events that man that it was just man-made no this is all divine by the most high god he's judging the earth right because if everybody thinks of god is how they usually think of just loving hugs and kisses everything's always going to be happy then all those airstrikes they would have never happened right. all the dead bodies all those children those things would have never happened but we know that the lord's judgment is is righteous and it's true and it's perfect right so if you're if you're sinning you're breaking God's laws, right? Now, last question, right? Last question before y'all get out of here. What is your nationality according to the Bible? Your biblical nationality. Because uh, about 75% of this book is, is actual history, secular history, that you cannot refute, right? So more than half of this book is actual history that you can link up throughout history with archaeology and different documents and books, right? So... What nation do we come back to? Because the Bible talks about every single nation on the earth. We all have ancestors. Everybody's a descendant of their ancestors, even even you, y'all two, right? And that man back there. Everybody has ancestors that we descend from. Who are our ancestors? Do you do you know who your ancestors are? Can tell me. What about modern day? What's your modern day nationality? You said what? From America, what about the the country? Because that's a citizenship. That's not really a nationality to say you're American. Yeah, that that's not really a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like what what nation does your family trace back to? Because even people in America, the people who rule America right now, they're not technically from America. From Puerto Rico, like indigenous to Puerto Rico. Uh, which one? Like your mother, or your father, both of them. All right, so, hey, if your parents are Puerto Rican, specifically your father, because your nationality goes by the seed of your father, the man carries the seed. Right. So that would determine your nationality. So depending on who your father is, you would be from one of the 12 tribes, more than likely from the tribe of Ephraim. Right. right? That's the so-called Puerto Ricans. Right? The so-called Puerto Ricans, hey, they're the head of the Northern Kingdom tribes, which is all the Latinos. Right? And then you have the Southern Kingdom tribes, which are so-called, uh, what they call Negroes right the west indies and like that right so we would come from one of the 12 tribes out of one nation right and that would be israel right so have you ever heard that before the israelites you heard about that okay well, what have you heard about the israelites hey let's get deuteronomy 7 and 6 deuteronomy 7 and 6 right and let's get deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12 right deuteronomy Chapter 7 and verse number 6. Bring it out. And read, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right. It said that the Israelites are holy. You know what holy means? People throw that word around all the time, right? In church, in religion, they say holy this, holy that, but they don't know what it actually means. It means to be set apart, to be different, right? Hey, it, it's just like a black sheep out of all the white sheep. That, that black sheep, it might be holy. It's set apart. It's different than all the other sheep. Right. right, there's something holy about our people, you know. For thou art holy, are an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto Himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above who? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right. So God said that He has a chosen people that are above all the other people on the face of the earth, all the other nations. He chose one nation to be above them. And he chose them to be to be a holy people, right? To rule the world, right? Come on. So let's bring this out in Deuteronomy 10. Here's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and verse number 12. Freak it out. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Right? So as God's chosen people, it said that Israel, what does God require of you? Right? So if you do find out that you're an Israelite from one of the uh one of your respective tribes, more than likely from the tribe of Ephraim, 
which will be your tribe, right? From the nation of Israel, right? If you do find out you're an Israelite, there's certain things that are required of you. I can't just say that I'm an Israelite. That's a big title, right? That's a prince that has power with God. Not everybody has that title, right? Not everybody's God's chosen people. It's one nation out of all these nations. I mean, look at all these nations right here. Out of all these nations, God, God picked you. You gotta, you gotta consider that, brother. So what does God require of the Israelites of God's chosen people in 2023? Read on. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord. What do we have to do? To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Right. So what's required of the Israelites of this one nation of people is to keep the commandments of the Lord. Let me get Psalms 1, 147 and verse 19. Last precept. Right. Psalms 147 and 19. This is a big misconception. Not a lot of people know this, that according to the Bible, God has one chosen people that he chose to be his people to rule and to be better than all the other nations. Not only that, he's not even dealing with the other nations. Right. Right. He's choosing this one nation of people to eventually lift them up, rise them up over their oppressors, and to rule the entire earth so we can have peace on earth once again. Right? right? Read on. Uh, Psalms 147. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 147, and verse 19. He shews his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. Right? So God's saying he showed all his laws, statutes, and commandments unto Israel. It, it didn't name any other nation. It didn't name the Moabites and the Ishmaelites and all the other nations in the Bible. It's talking about Israel. So he showed all the laws, statutes, and commandments unto who? Unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. He had what? He had not dealt so with any nation. One more time. He had not dealt so with any nation. God is not dealing with any other nation. Thus said the Lord. Right? That's not thus said my words. I'm just a man. Right? We're going off the precepts. Read on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And they don't even know the Lord's judgments. That's why they're so astonished at everything that's going on in the world right now. Because they say, man, why would God do this? Right? Why would God do all these things? I thought I thought God was like this. Or I thought God was like that. I thought God would never let something like this happen. Right? But things like this happen when we don't keep the commandments. Right? And the next brother is going to expound on the curses that our people go through for not keeping God's commandments. Right? Because you got to think about it. Why are we in the lower state right now? Hey, there's something that we did, we went against our God. That's why we're out here. We're trying to tell you to come back to your God. If you want to see this type of stuff stop happening to your people. All right? So I'll pray to the Most High Yahweh. Right? Kwame Yashel. Kwame Yashel. Kwame Yashel. Kwame Yashel. Kwame Yashel. Kwame Yashel.